Welcome to the MSU Deer Labs online seminar series brought to you by Mississippi State University Extension Service and the Forest and Wildlife Research Center. My name is Steve Damaris and I'm the Taylor Chair in Applied Big Game Research and Instruction at Mississippi State University. Thank you for joining me. So when we talk about nutrition and antler development, very important point, nutrition for antler development starts right here. The doe, the condition that she was in, the nutrition that she was eating when she conceived this fawn, when she grew that fawn within her, her nutrition mattered and the nutrition that she's able to consume while she's nursing that fawn that all matters. Don't think about trying to put out a food plot or put out some kind of a feed during the hunting season to help your deer. You need to have nutrition available when they need it. And if you're trying to grow larger antlers on your bucks, then you need to have nutrition the type of quality and quantity of nutrition available to the doe when she's being bred, when she's growing her fetus, and when she's nursing her fetus through to lactation. Fawns, that once they were weaned, if they were fed 10% protein compared to a group of fawns fed 16% protein, the fawns raised on 10% protein grew smaller antlers as yearlings compared to fawns fed 16% protein. So the quality of the diet during its first year, its first year that it's going to grow antlers, is significantly impacted by the diet quality. And so when is this happening? Fawn born in the spring or summer in Mississippi and much of the southeast, they're born in the summertime, and so they're going to be lactating, nursing through the summer. Uh, in some more northern areas, they might uh, nursing into the middle of summer and then eating forages, natural forages that they can get themselves. So uh, what we're talking about here is the forage from late summer through the winter and through the spring and into the next summer. So that nutritional quality has to be present in the summer, late summer, fall, winter, spring, and the following summer. That's what we're talking about here for this time sequence of this particular research. Here's some more research that was done actually with uh, red deer. That first winter's forage, they had two types of forage. It was either poor quality or high quality. The poor quality forage delayed the pedicle development, which is the, the base on which antlers grow. So it delayed the growth of the base of the antler. It delayed the velvet growth of essentially the, the growing antler. And then it delayed the shedding of the velvet. So a poor well, these are red deer stags, so a, a yearling stag that had been raised on poor quality forage the previous winter had uh, late growing antlers, late shedding velvet, and lighter weight antlers at one and a half years of age compared to stags that spent the winter eating high quality forage. Another study looking at acorns and an early green up, so this is essentially a fall and winter into early spring study that was done actually up in Michigan. And uh, there were two groups of yearlings put into this study. One group, they had access to acorns in the fall, and then they had an, a simulated early green up. And so in other words, they, they had an access to a high quality diet earlier in the spring as if it was a, a warm winter and a, an early spring, the, the plants started greening up earlier compared to a group of six-month-olds that did not have access to acorns and had 
the equivalent of a hard winter where they had uh, a late green up. And the animals that had acorns and an early green up had twice as many points as a yearling, as a year and a half old buck, compared to the, uh, the yearlings that had no acorns and a late green up. And so this shows the importance of forage quality and quantity during that first year of life. So the importance of nutrition starts when the doe is being bred and she's raising the, the fetus, growing the fetus within her and while she's lactating. And then as once that uh, fawn weans, it starts eating. All of that is important, nutritionally speaking. The life stage, uh, it's critical. This shows the relationship between nutrition and antler development of two different groups of bucks. This was in a, a research pen also, where they studied a group of bucks that were raised on 8% protein diet after weaning and compared to a group of bucks that were raised on 16% crude protein after weaning from their mothers. And you can see the average Boone and Crockett score of year and a half old bucks. This is the age here, Boone and Crockett score on the vertical axis. The 8% diet bucks, crude protein diet bucks, scored about uh, almost 10 inches less in Boone and Crockett score as a yearling than the bucks that fed 16% crude protein. And you can look out at two year old, Two and a half, they were uh, about 60 inches compared to about 75 inches at two and a half. Moving out to three and a half, the bucks that had the 8% crude protein were about 70 or 75. And the bucks that had the 16% crude protein are about 90 or 92. So significantly larger antlers in the higher quality diet. And then out at four years of age, we see almost a 20 inch difference in Boone and Crockett score based on whether or not you had an 8% crude protein diet or a 16% crude protein diet. Diet quality matters throughout the deer's life. So the bottom line is you are what you eat. What your mother told you when you were growing up, she said, you need to eat a good diet. You can't just eat potato chips. Someday you're going to turn into a potato chip or a candy bar. Well, that's really true because this deer, this buck, this pitiful looking buck ate the equivalent of potato chips all of his life. He is in terrible condition. He's growing terrible looking antlers. This is a summertime. He is almost starving to death because he does not have the quality of diet or the quantity of diet that he needs. In this picture, you can see uh, grasses on the ground and then up above the grasses are a hard uh, waxy leaved browse that is very undigestible to him. He is literally starving to death because it doesn't have any decent forbs or, or higher quality woody brows or woody vines to eat. And this is not what you want to be producing on your property. 